Here is a Wright Cyclone 1820-97, nine-cylinder radial, take up horsepower 1200, with a controllable pitch propeller. And the propeller in this particular case is able to have a pitch change to match the engine with the load on the engine to the best RPM and manifold pressure for the flight condition. The device, as you see, is a prop governor on top. Is what the pilot uses to regulate the RPM of the engine, and the throttle is used to regulate the manifold pressure of the engine. The engine is supercharged at two points. It has an internal blower, and it has an external super turbo supercharger, which enables this engine to have full pressure and horsepower up to 27,000 feet. The carburetor is kind of an early form of mass airflow fuel injection. It uh, has a, what we call a pressure injection carburetor, which has an automatic mixture device on it in order to regulate the mixture according to altitude. When the turbo supercharger is in operation, it causes the carburetor to think it's at sea level, up to 27,000 feet. Thus, the airplane will give full performance at that point. Now going further back, you can see that there's nine radial cylinders on the engine. Each cylinder has a bore of six and a quarter inches in diameter and a stroke of six inches on the crankshaft. And that total of those nine cylinders again, as I said before, is 1,823 cubic inches. So we call the engine an 1820, R1820. And the propeller is not keyed directly to the crankshaft. It is 16 to 9 ratio. For every 9 revolutions of the propeller, the engine has got 16 revolutions. The reason for the odd number of revolutions is because of preventing harmonic couple between the engine and propeller in operation. As you go back further, you will see the accessory case. We have the, what we call a ring cowling removed from the engine. You can see the exhaust stack coming back from the, what we call the collector ring, which is the exhaust ring that runs around the backside of the engine. Then we have up here the accessories. I can see from this point of view up here, this, the generator, which is at the very bottom. And then above that generator is a starter. Then you can see one of the magnetos up there. And over here, this device is the feathering pump. Now the reason for the feathering pump is to, if you have an engine failure for any reason, this feather, this propeller would continue to windmill and cause the engine to continue to turn over, which could be de de detrimental to the engine. You're turning the blade leading edge into the wind so that it no longer windmills and it will no longer turn the engine over for safety. You can air start these engines, by the way, if once feathered, if for any reason you feel it's safe to restart the engine, it was by starting to unfeather the engine, and then it starts turning around 900 RPM, and then you apply your fuel and, and magneto, and ground the magneto, and it'll start your engine again. It's very important that that feathering system work on these. As we come back in here, you'll look up inside the nacelle, you'll see an intercooler. And the reason for the intercooler is that this being the turbo supercharger, anytime you compress air, it heats it up. So hot air is not as efficient for your engine as cold, it's less dense. So what you need to do is to cool the air off with the intercooler. So what happens, you've got two inlets for each engine on the wing. You've got one for ram air to the carburetor itself, and you've got another one to ram air through the intercooler. And these intercoolers have a control in the cockpit that regulates the amount of air flowing through in case of certain icing conditions at certain altitudes to warm the carburetor air up and up to melt any ice that might be detrimental to flight. And of course, this is your turbo supercharger, which is controlled electronically in this model air, G, uh, the G model, which, uh, well, it's the first model airplane with a setting that you just turn a dial and set your boost and then away you go. This is an air cooling device which picks up the ram air from the forward motion of the airplane to cool the bucket wheel down somewhat 
from what, what it would otherwise be if you didn't have that. Okay, this bucket is the bucket wheel, which in this particular case turns in this direction. Because you'll notice, if you really want to get technical, you'll see the slant of the blades in the bucket wheel. That as the gas expands and comes flying out, it kind of levers it over in that direction. And this is called the nozzle box. Now above it, on a shaft that's directly tied with this thing, is the compressor wheel. Now it is interesting that the compressor wheel that compresses the air it's the same diameter as the one in the engine, 11 inches across. So they're both the same diameter and they both look a lot alike. And then of course back here is your wastegate that is controlled from the cockpit, either hydraulically or electronically. That closes off when you want to apply supercharger. And this is, as I say, automatic to altitude. And a bucket wheel max RPM would be 22,000 RPM, which is governed by a governor. Above that altitude where the governor starts to hold the speed of the bucket wheel back, the airplane will lose power. The manifold pressure will drop off.